Okay, so I got this truck a little while ago and now I have a chance to work on it. So this is a 96 FL70, 8.3 Cummins, 5-speed transmission, 2-speed rear, air brakes, 33,000 pound GVW. A lot of you guys have seen this on the previous video about this dump truck. Kind of introduced it there. So now I'm ready to fix it. So I bought this for four grand and the reason is because the guy said it needs a new clutch so let me show you what I figured out since then so the inspection cover is off show you what I got in here so basically this is a pull style clutch system it's not a push type like you would normally see in smaller trucks so here's what's going on the clutch pedal goes right down to the floor I checked the linkage, it's all good. So what's going on here is that throw out bearing right there is not attached to the pressure plate anymore. So let me show you if I can. It's kind of, it's, it's hard because my hand blocks the camera, but. So here's the lever for it. So I'm just gonna turn that for you to show what it's doing. This transmission also has some leaks and it's got a lot of rust. Not sure if I can save it, but we're gonna try. It works good, so let me see if I can save the case. If it fails, it fails, but right now it's working good. I tested all the gears. So I'll just kind of show you guys what this is doing here. I don't believe this has glow plugs or a grid heater. Pretty good being with the snow on the ground right now. This, the air system is pretty good too. I still got pressure from hours ago. So right now, if I hit the clutch, just nothing, no response at all. Nothing happens. It's not doing anything. But the cool thing is to test it out or to, to move it. What I can do is just put it in gear, start it up right in gear. Well, let's let the, the brakes off first. downshift if I really need to. You just gotta rev match it. It's uh well anyways I just wanted to show you guys what it could do but let's get that transmission out of there. So the first thing I need to do is get this drive shaft off. So there's a carrier bearing right here. Um, I think what we got to do is take these bolts off right here, slip this back a little bit. The only way to do that though is to unmount it from right here, from the frame. Two bolts. And then I think with this slip yoke here, we can push it back far enough to then pull that out just enough so that it can flap down. You can see that I got quite a few leaks here, so I'm gonna make sure I get all these seals. I just hit that with 1,200 pounds of torque and it's still not budging.
Okay, drive shaft is out. Now we're gonna start working on linkage and the PTO. I'm gonna drain the fluid out before I do anything more. I don't know if that's some sort of stop leak stuff or if that's just metal shavings in there. I don't know. I don't think it could be metal shavings. That's crazy. There's a magnet right here and there's some on it, but it's not much. I think somebody tried to stop this leak. They put some sort of stuff in there to do that. As you can see, they got a leak right here and a leak right here. So, hopefully, that's the case. I think somebody put a band aid on this transmission. I'm going to go ahead and take this exhaust off, take the muffler off, and everything. Makes it easier to get to the transmission. All right guys, well, I think I'm gonna change course here because I cannot get that PTO pump off of there. I tried disconnecting it right here at the flange and then I tried taking these bolts out and I can't get these bolts out. I had like five feet of breaker bar on there and I could not get those out. So what I'm going to do is disconnect these lines here 
This is the high pressure line that goes to the cylinder and this is the intake to the pump. So I'm gonna just disconnect those, drain the fluids, and drop this whole transmission and pump together. I really didn't want to do it like that because it makes it like 100 pounds, 150 pounds heavier. So that's a big pump sitting there. And it makes it awkward. But at this point, I think I'm just better off taking it off as one. And then when I get it on the bench, I can get it off the right way, see what's going on with it. Oh, I also wanted to mention, I actually did three different ways to try to take this off. I tried to take this apart right here where it meets the transmission. Two of them are like completely rusted and maybe I could weld something onto them, but I don't want to do it while it's sitting there. It's on the top that they're all messed up, so it's really hard to get to. I guess 1,200 pounds of torque isn't enough. That exhaust pipe is attached to a bracket that goes over top of the transmission, so I'm just gonna cut that little U-bolt right there. So I kind of didn't expect that, but I got at least, I got one broken bolt there. I got one right there, one right there, one right there, one right there. And that's it so far. But I can guarantee you I'm gonna break the next two. So I'm gonna have to take that adapter plate out and probably weld some nuts onto those to get them out. If not, I guess I'll have to get a new adapter plate. I believe that's aluminum. That's probably why, dissimilar metals.
one broke. Now's a good time to put the transmission jack underneath of it. What I'm going to do here is, because this is kind of unbalanced here, I'm going to put a 2 by right here, 2 by 4 And then I got like this hook going around the other side. I'm probably going to need a piece of plywood too, like a half inch piece as another shim type of thing. That was definitely a struggle getting that out of the truck and bringing it in here setting it up on this table so i i immediately realized that there's a there's a crack right here in the bell housing also the bell housing is missing some material right there and right there it's like routed away from all the salt luckily this is really the only thing that's super affected by that salt so the story behind this truck is that it was used on a farm for plowing. I'm sure that's why this rust is here so bad, because it was salting. That's also why it has low miles on it, but a lot of hours, because it probably spent a lot of hours idling and going 10 miles an hour, that sort of thing, reversing a lot maybe. So I'm not gonna be able to save the bell housing, and I'm probably not gonna be able to save this transmission. Even though it works, the case is just totally shot. Um, I could. I could scrape all this stuff off and then paint it up, but what I did is I ordered another one that is just a takeout that's not tested. Um, I, it was only $600, so I figured even if I can just use the case out of it and I can swap the parts, that would be good. But I think there's probably nothing wrong with the transmission that I'm getting. It's on its way, so in a few days I'll know more about it. I'll take it apart and see what's going on, but um, I think you know we'll make one transmission out of two. One thing I'm probably going to have to do is take the input shaft off because that's probably not the same exact one that's on the other one. I'm probably also going to have to take the output shaft off. While I'm waiting for that other transmission, what I'm going to do is take this PTO pump off. What I'm going to do is take the flywheel housing out of the truck because I may need to do some work to it too. But for right now, I bought this little crane that can pick this up and we're going to get this in the air and get that PTO pump off. get this PTO pump off 
this bolt is completely rotted away. There's no way I'm getting that off. Same thing with this one. So I'm just gonna cut those off with a grinding wheel. Almost there. Just gotta get these ones off. These ones are already loose, so I just put those back on there to hold it on so it doesn't fall off. Cause that's pretty heavy. It's probably 150 pounds. Am I setting it on this bench? Yeah. Yeah, I'll get you something. To put it on. Hang on. Okay. Good. Oh yeah, that's where the metal shavings are coming from, right there. See, there's two shims on the left and one shim on the right, so I got to remember that. <clears throat> one more, and then you should be able to get the rest of the way with the impact. Well, this is not the ideal way to split this apart, but I guess this will work. So 
so what happened is this shaft here got just totally welded and rusted to this shaft right here. This is the shaft on the hydraulic pump side. This is the shaft on the PTO side. So that's why this wouldn't come apart right here because that was holding it. So let's try to see if we can get this off of here now. I have a feeling I'm going to have to cut this, cut it down both sides and kind of split it because I really need to save this shaft because I can't identify this pump. So if I can save that shaft, then I can save this pump. I might have to spruce up the splines a little bit there, but if I can save this, then that'll totally eliminate me from having to dig into this pump, which was working fine before. Um, the only thing is this right here is, is a little bit broken, but I think it'll be fine. Put some washers on there. Um, I just don't think that that's going to be a problem. I kind of really have nothing to lose anyways. I don't have to take the transmission out to do this. If I have a problem with this pump, I just have to take the pump off. As long as I can get these to slide, and I'm going to get a new one of these shafts right here, then I can just pull that out the way it's supposed to be pulled out and then I can replace the pump or fix it or whatever in the future but for right now it was working fine so my goal is to just put it back the way it is you can see that there's some wear a little bit anyways but it'll be fine this is all the crud that came out of this this spot right here this little flange housing right here which is just four little allen screws to take it out I'm going to have to replace that because it's got that hole in it. So you can see the holes right there. And look at all this gunk in here. I didn't even start to get it out yet. But it doesn't seem to be too magnetic. Maybe a few pieces here and there. But for the most part, I think this is just dirt and salt and stuff. So I think that's what made this corrode. Well, I'm sure of that. And it's pretty much because there's this little hole right here and stuff gets in through that hole and then I'm sure as moisture gets in here it kind of washes the salt that gets in there down to the bottom which is right here and that's why that hole is there I'll bet you that's why it's like that so I'm gonna try to find parts for this PTO um, this housing seems to be good but obviously I have to get a new flange housing right here I gotta order a new one of these got to get a new housing here just this part I got to get new bearings new snap rings new seals this is fine this top gear is fine but the bottom one is worn out you can see it's just rounded over but that's all one piece so you can't just replace that bottom piece it's it's all one solid piece so just get a new gear get a new one of these as you can see on this side where it meshes you can see how bad it is I'm pretty sure that's where all of this metal is coming from you can see it all in there but there was a lot more than that and I also found two balls in there too which I don't know where they came from They're, they probably came from inside the transmission but that's funny because the transmission is working fine. So I don't know what that's about. But I don't have to worry because I'm just getting a new one. The new one comes with a new bell housing. So I didn't order a new one until I figure out if that's the right one. They couldn't tell me. They couldn't tell me what truck it was off of. So I don't know if the bell housing that I'm getting is going to work. I might have to swap out the input shaft from here might have to swap out the output shaft and I don't know maybe the sensor maybe I'll reuse the top shifter cover piece but other than that this transmission is just junked it's got this crack going around it, it goes all the way around this flange right here um, I was gonna try to see if I can restore that but with that crack there. I didn't see that crack until I took it out. So it's definitely a no go on that. But the bell housing is rotted right through right here and right here. So you can see daylight right there. 
So that's rotted right out. So here's the flywheel. You can see it's got some uh, some hot spots on it. Surprisingly though, when you run your finger across it, it's not too bad. But I've come this far, so I'll definitely get that resurfaced. This is a dual clutch system. Um, both clutch discs seem to be fine, but in order to get the new pressure plate, I gotta get the clutch kit anyways. So I'm gonna go ahead and just order the whole thing. I'll just keep these around just in case I need them in the future maybe. So remember this is a pull type pressure plate. So basically what happens is there's a bearing inside of there and as you're putting pressure on the clutch pedal, it's pulling it out this way. So what happened was the bearing that's inside of here, you can see the race is in there still, the outer race. The bearing just completely disintegrated and that let loose of the throw out bearing here, the whole the whole assembly right here that just it just disconnected the two so that it was no longer pulling it anymore. Um, so that's that's kind of the story behind that. So right now I'm waiting for this transmission to come in and I'm waiting to see what it has on it before I order more parts but I'm also in the midst of getting some parts for this pump together and I gotta get the clutch kit so in the next few days I'm gonna get that all wrapped up and then I can put this thing back in I'm gonna clean all the parts that I'm gonna reuse so for right now I'm gonna clean this this that and that and possibly that if I have time but it's if it's relatively the same price to get a new PTO as it is to get the parts for it then obviously I'll just get the the new PTO I think I can find one for about seven hundred dollars so that's not a lot of money and once you start adding up parts if it's five hundred dollars I'm not gonna do that See this flywheel has hot spots on it so I'm gonna go take it to get resurfaced it's not really that rough but you can see the, the little spots on there so it's better to be safe than sorry it's only about a hundred maybe a hundred and a quarter to get this resurfaced
Okay, so I'm at the car wash right now because they have hot water. So I'm going to take this transmission and clean it off. First thing I want to do though is cover this opening so I don't get any water in here. So I'm just going to put some uh, Gorilla Tape over that with some heat. I was going to make a plate for it, but I just don't even feel like taking the time to do that. Uh, you can see it's pretty, uh, it's pretty crusty. That's what it's supposed to look like right there. car wash didn't work that well so I'm gonna go ahead and take this bell housing off and clean it further with my own stuff How much torque that swivel took out of that? Mm. You never realize it, but yeah.
Sliders are all good. I don't see anything wrong with this. All the gears look nice and nice and tight. I was going to take the bottom covers off, but I don't see any point now. Looks totally fine down there. Almost no metal on the magnet. All the synchronizers look good. Looks like there's a little bit of play in that one. Yeah, but it's uh, it's supposed to have play. I was gonna say it should have play in it, right? Well, when things heat up, they expand, so mm -hmm. you can't have it so when they uh, heat up that they uh, don't move anymore. Mm. So I think really all I need to do is just uh, replace the input shaft seal and then check for end play and that's about it. You gonna do the input shaft bearing too or, or just no. the seal? No, it doesn't need it. I mean, I'll, yeah, I'll check the bearing looks pretty decent. I'll, I'll check the I'll check the input shaft bearing for play. I'm just gonna check the end play before I put this back together. So the specs say between 6 one thousandths and 10 one thousandths. So what I'm going to do is just pry this way first. So we'll call that 31. And then pry it this way. And I get 37. 39. 31 to 39. So that's 8 one thousandths. Specs say between 6 and 10. So that's perfect. When you're checking for this, though, you want to spin this around a few times to make sure you're getting the same reading. So that's well within spec. I just wanted to make sure that this transmission was okay because it came out of a vehicle that was unknown. They couldn't tell me anything about it. They couldn't tell me if it worked. They just said it wasn't inspected. So I was kind of taking a gamble on buying it because I didn't really know if it was something that was junk or not, but I kind of hoped for the best and planned for the worst, which is using the parts from the other transmission. I just needed it for the case. So for $600, I got this. And that's well worth it for just a case, but turned out to be the whole transmission was good. I don't see anything wrong with that transmission at all. So it's the 6305 model. You can see it's 6 one thousandths to 10 one thousandths. Eaton is pretty good about having a, a nice uh, catalog for parts and also for just the actual service manual too. These transmissions just are really simple. There's the counter shaft end plate right there. I'm not gonna get involved with that, but you can see anything that you need is right here, available right on their website. The only thing is I kinda need you to rotate it the other way. Yeah, like that. Like that? Is that better? I'm not going to be able to talk with this. Good? Yeah. Oh, man, that's heavy. I'm going to take these bolts off. That'll 
allow you to get easier access at the seal. You can access it from right here, but it's not that easy to do. It's easier when that's pulled off. So it's just a lot easier to access this seal from right here. There's nothing wrong with that seal, but I'm not going to go through all this trouble to replace this transmission and not replace that seal. Um, that's one of the most prone areas to leak on a transmission is the input and the output shaft. More the output shaft than anything actually, but um, the output shaft is also easier to access once the transmission is back in the vehicle. Before I take it out, I want to just make sure this is the right seal. So I made a mistake and I didn't get this gasket here, but I know I can just make a gasket, that's not a problem. So we'll go ahead and use the great stuff on this and that'll be fine. It's not worth the trip, it's like an hour each way for me to go get that. So the manual says to put Loctite 262 on these bolts. So I couldn't find 262, but this is Threadlocker Red High Temperature, which is pretty much the same thing. And they say 15 to 20 foot-pounds of torque.
So since I don't have a gasket in there anymore, I'm a little bit worried that that was acting as a shim. So I'm going to recheck my end play. But first I got to replace this output shaft seal. So in order to get this yoke out, you need to take this nut out. And then behind this yoke is going to be a seal. That's the rear seal to the transmission. So what I'm going to do is lock two of these synchronizers at the same time, which is going to lock up the transmission. That way I can turn this without it just turning freely like that. See, now it's locked up. So you guys could see I was struggling with this nut right here and this seal wasn't leaking as far as I could tell so I'm gonna leave it alone since it's not broke I'm not gonna fix it I really wanted to replace it but it just was not happening so the good news is when I put this on the truck and I could put the truck into gear put the parking brake on and then I can have something to hold not just the gears themselves but the whole transmission from turning so then if I ever need to replace it, really, I just take the drive shaft off and then I can get right to this nut right here. And that's always ideal to not have to take this out again. I'm trying to do anything I can to make sure that I don't have to ever take this out ever again. So I just checked the main shaft end play again. And just so you guys know, from taking that gasket out of there and using this sealant here, it actually did change by at least one one thousandth so now i'm up to about a nine one thousandth just keep that in mind when you're doing things i'm still within spec but it brought me a little bit closer to being out of spec this side is where you would shim it if it's out of spec or you put a new bearing in or two new bearings actually so i got a lot of mess here i got to clean up but before i put this back together i'm going to show you guys i'm going to run through all the gears and show you how this works so this right here is reverse when I go this way. See how it goes the opposite way of what I'm spinning over on the input shaft. So then put that slider over there. That's first gear. You can see I'm turning a lot here and it's only turning a little bit there. So then second gear spins a little bit faster. Third gear, spins a lot faster. Then fourth gear, almost spinning the same speed now. And then this is the fifth gear. So now when you have it in fifth gear, that's a one to one ratio. So again, reverse, first, second, 
second. You can see there's like clutch material right there. That's part of the synchronizers. Third. Fourth. Fifth. That's it. Very simple. So in preparation for getting this new transmission ready, what I also need to do is get this input shaft taken off of the old one. Not because I need it on the new one, but because I want to use it as an alignment tool. So I can just take these bolts out and then just pull this input shaft right out and that makes a good alignment tool. So I decided to go ahead and take the bell housing off and what a nightmare that was. I got one bolt off, this one right here. The other three I had to use the plasma torch to get those off. Never seen so much corrosion around a transmission like this. But now I can get this input shaft out pretty easily. Now I can clean this up and use it as a clutch alignment tool. So now I can take this transmission and put it in storage for parts. I'll put some plates on it so it doesn't get mice or something in it. I am so glad to get this out of here. Now I can clean all this mess up. I hate having it this messy. This is the new bell housing that I got and that's the old one. So this is the shift arm right here for the clutch. And on this one it's on this side and it's totally different. So I was looking this over and I think what I can do 
is just take this arm off and stick it right on here and kind of align it with this in respect to this but then I'm also going to have this piece sticking out here like this far so maybe I'm just going to swap this whole thing out I don't know we'll see how it goes I put this truck on the back burner for a little while, but now I'm back and I'm ready to do some work on it. So let me tell you where I'm at. That flywheel housing, I was trying to take it off. Um, I got the starter out, which was a major ordeal. I got to get that rebuilt now. I'm trying to get this thing out because you can see that I broke some bolts off inside the housing. And also, this hole is stripped out. So, let's see, I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven bolts to get out. So, I was originally just going to get a new housing, but then it was kind of hard to find, and it's like $1,000. So, then I thought, maybe what I'll do is just get the thing out and get it on the bench, and then I can really work on it good and try to get all those bolts out. So that was a good idea until I realized that I took some of these bolts out and then I realized that actually this is the bolt that needs to come out and you need to jack the motor up. So I'm at the point right now where I'm, I'm just gonna try to get these out while I'm underneath the truck instead of taking this whole adapter housing out. Some people call it an adapter housing, some people call it a flywheel housing. There's plenty of room to sit upright in here, so I'm going to go ahead and just see if I can restore this while it's still in the truck. So let's give that a shot. I'm going to weld some nuts onto these, and hopefully they'll spin off after I do that, because that will also heat them up too. I went ahead and bought the rear main seal, but I can't really replace it unless I get this out. So at this point, I think I'm going to can that idea. I really don't like that idea. I really wanted to just replace that, but... If it's not broken, I guess I won't fix it. I got some of these nuts on. They are the right size. They just don't want to go on. Some of them don't. I got some of them on. Look at that, I got that one. First try. Hopefully they're all like that. Got that one. No, I think I'm good. Not that one. Oh, no, I guess I didn't.
All right, I got that one. That was the third try on that one. Got to give it a second to dissipate the heat into the aluminum, and then the aluminum expands a little bit. Sometimes it's good to go in the tightening motion just a little bit too. That one didn't take. That one's just not coming out. I got all the rest of them out, but that one, I've put at least 20 different nuts on there and every one of them broke off. So I'm down to the point where I'm gonna start drilling it out now. I'll just put a helico oil in there. I feel what one you need. So now I'm going to do the same thing to this hole right here. I got to drill it out to a 13 30 seconds and then tap it 
and then put in the helic oil. And then the rest of these I'm going to just clean up. I'm just going to chase the threads with a tap. These bolts are an M10 one and a half pitch and it's a 13 30 seconds bit that you need for it. These are really nice. They really save you sometimes. And you can use them in aluminum or steel. In my opinion, I think it even adds a little bit more strength because as you're tightening it, it's really pushing those threads into the into the housing, kind of like almost a little bit extra strength. I couldn't find a stud at a local store that I could use to put in this flywheel, like a guide pin. So I just made one. This is an M12 1.25 pitch, and I just cut off the head of it, and I put a little slot in so that I can use a screwdriver in case it wants to jam itself in there. That was rather painless compared to other times when I didn't have a stud. So I'm going to put some blue Loctite on these flywheel bolts. Some people say to use it, some people say to use red, some people say to use none. I don't really think it matters to be honest. 75 pounds of torque.
So we had a little bit more of a setback than I thought. This tank is completely rotted out. I was gonna try to like JB weld it and paint it over, but it's just too far gone. So while I have this tank off, I'm gonna make sure I get everything that I can behind it. Cause I plan on taking this when I get my new garage and taking the whole thing apart and just redoing everything, painting everything, getting all the rust out. But for right now, I'll just get everything that I can. So I got a new tank. This is like $700 brand new from the dealer. Definitely wasn't looking forward to spending that money on that, but something that needed to be done. That tank wasn't even leaking at first until we tried to take it out. We were trying to get this rust out here. As soon as you started moving it, it just just rotted right away. Pieces were flaking off and the diesel was squirting out. Just thick layers of rust on there. another one of those studs I made and you just grind a little slot in it for a flathead tighten these bolts in a crisscross pattern to 35 Having this input shaft made it pretty easy. I ended up cutting this input shaft down. I just didn't feel like dealing with that end of it. If I need a new one, I guess I'll just order it. But for right now, I don't think I need another one.
little bit. Maybe like three inches. Well, quite a bit. The input shaft, yeah, isn't even quite to the middle yet. Oh, that's right, because it's going back towards me as I'm going up. So I got plenty of room to go forward. Uh, you got maybe like two, three inches to go forward. Okay, there you go. Two more clicks there. Hold on. She's kissing it, kind of. You got to go up a little bit more. Maybe one more. All right. Now it's got to come real. Looks like you should be able to. Uh... Okay, this is going to come towards me a little bit. Should be able to go in. A little bit more. About like that. Now you can try to push forward on it. Okay. Oh, that's good. Oh, there she goes. Wait, wait. Okay, go ahead. It went a little further, but now it stopped again. Okay. I ended up getting a new PTO and a new pump and all the stuff with it. That's a steel spacer. You gotta check the backlash on it. I think it was like eleven or twelve hundred dollars for the two of these with all the things with it.
So to set the backlash on this PTO, you can see I have the dial indicator mounted right onto the transmission and then it goes right into the drive gear on the PTO. So you can see this gear right here is the one that engages inside the transmission from this drive gear that goes into the PTO. So I'm supposed to have between six and 12 thousandths. So that's what I have for a backlash right there. So it's about 11 thousandths. That's the backlash of the transmission included right there all together. But if I just get the backlash of this gear right here, this is what it is right here. It's about 11 thousandths. So it's still within spec. It's on the upper end of it, but it's still good. So I had to put two gaskets in here, the small ones, and then one big shim. It's got a steel shim in there. The company that I got this from set me up with all that stuff. I just had to figure out which gaskets to use. So at first I started out with all of them, and it had like half this dial indicator as the backlash so I had to take a few of the bigger ones out and then I got to the point where I only use the two small ones which I think are ten thousandths gaskets plus the actual steel one and that was right on the money you're supposed to use a gasket on both sides of that steel shim because otherwise you can have fluid that leaks out so this is all ready to put this top on and then I can mount the pump right here. When we were trying to still get the adapter housing out, we took the starter out. And in the process, some of the bolts were frozen up on it. This is the result of trying to get one of these bolts out. This is a plastic housing. And it just broke right in half. So I got a new solenoid. And whenever I need a part, I always call the Freightliner dealership and get a part number and then I see how much they want and then I just type that part number in online and see what I can get it for online. So far that saved me thousands of dollars just on this build alone. But this was only like $50 versus like $300 for a new starter. It's just three bolts, it's not a big deal. And I can change over the ground strap right there. I'm gonna paint this up before I put this solenoid on. It was already wire wheeled down. So now I'm just going to paint it up black. And if you can just guide the front end. Yep. It's gonna go up. Okay. That's gonna go like that. Something like that. This is the air actuator that engages the PTO. And that's a sensor right there to tell you that it's on. So they didn't give me a new gasket for this, so I'm just gonna put this right stuff on there.
This air switch right here is facing the bottom with the ports. So I'm gonna take that off and flip it around so it's facing up so the airlines can go in this way. So at this point, I'm ready to put some fluid in this transmission. So you can pump it in from the side, or it's two and a half gallons. So what I'm gonna do is just put it in through the top here. So it's half of a five gallon bucket. So this is 50 weight synthetic transmission oil. I'm gonna put about two gallons in and then go check it at the fill level. Pull the plug off and see where it's at. Okay, it's not coming out yet, so maybe another half a gallon or so. Another gallon. Okay, so it's full. It might be a little bit over full, but that's okay. With the manual transmission, it's okay if you're a little bit more full than you need to be.
since we messed with the fuel system. I just have to prime it now. Alright, let's try it. So since I took the pump out, I lost a lot of fluid, so I gotta replace it. I gotta replace the fluid in the cylinder. So I think the plan right now is to lift this body up until I can get to the top of the cylinder and then I can fill it. Go. All right, it's on there. Ready? It's almost there. Okay. It's on it. Okay, so I need to take this bleeder off right here and fill this with fluid. Okay, 
got this air hooked right up to the truck. important to get that clean because otherwise you'll be getting stuff in the fluid and there's no filter there's no reservoir on the system you don't want dirt to get in there it'll never get out got my uh, emergency backup piece there just in case something happens getting a lot of bubbles in it so it's gonna it's gonna be foamy but this little thing right here is to take the air out it's an air bleeder you can hear the air coming out of it yeah just gotta work it up and down real slow to start with it's got a big return hose so that thing was completely empty you need to fill that plus the cylinder Still pumping. Probably got three gallons in. Probably need another gallon. Okay, so I think I got enough fluid in here. So I'm gonna test it out for the first time. See if it'll go up. I got a bucket underneath there to make sure any excess fluid that comes out will go down in there and it probably will have some come out. Okay, seems to be moving good. Stop it there. Check. There's not really much fluid coming out. Probably will when it gets to the top. All right, lift it up, and I'll take the uh, I'll take those things out. I'll take the locks out. putting some fuel in this brand new tank. I had just enough before to run it, but now I'm gonna put some more. I think this is 55 gallons.
Okay guys, so I did a lot of work to this truck. This video has been about three months in the making because I don't have time to just work on it full time. I'd say if I had every day into it and all the parts together to begin with, I'd probably do it in two weeks. It's a lot of work, a lot of work. I have a lot of labor into it. Um, I don't think this is as good of a buy as I thought when I bought it. Obviously I went way above and beyond with a whole bunch of different things, but it needed all that. So I don't really know where I'm at with it, but I think I probably got like three grand in parts into it, plus four grand for buying it, another grand for getting it back to me for the tow. So I have some money into it. I'm sure it's still a decent deal, but not nearly as good as I thought. I do really like the truck though. So I think it's worth it, especially with the low mileage on it. This engine in here, the 8.3 Cummins, is supposed to be a pretty good engine. It's wet sleeve, so if I ever have a problem, I can always replace the liners in it. I always find myself looking for trucks that have transmission problems, especially if it's a manual. Well, if it's not a manual, I won't even buy it. But I always look for transmission problems because you can get them for really cheap. And I definitely know my way around transmissions. I'm not an expert, but I know enough to keep me going. So it's usually worst case scenario is the way I look at it. Worst case scenario is new transmission. So this needed that, plus it needed a pump and a PTO, fuel tank, a bunch of other miscellaneous things. When I got this truck, I was looking underneath and I saw there was rust, but I didn't see any rot anywhere. So that's why I ended up buying it. It definitely has more rust than I thought though. Um, but it's not rotted, so that's good. So I can still save it. What I plan to do is take this bed off, um, flip it upside down, redo everything. So I got still a bunch of work to do for that and a bunch of other miscellaneous things. I didn't inspect it as well as I thought, but the other thing I thought about was the fact that this bed here is probably worth like two grand in itself. The tires are all good. That's probably another two grand worth of tires right there. The motor in it, that's probably another two grand. I could part this out and get way more money than I paid for it. That's kind of the way I thought of it when I bought it. As I'm fixing it up, I'm realizing that it's got a lot of rust. But I've come this far, so I can't turn back now. So I'll have to strip it down and really get the uh, frame sandblasted and painted up. Um, the whole bed, take that right off, flip it upside down, sandblast it paint it I'm not really a fan of the Dayton rims the clamp on style like this I really like the new hub style the hub centric style rims this takes 11 r 22 fives it's the same tire as all my other trucks so that's nice because I always have a bunch of those laying around but this is all good this bumper is made out of I think that's about 5 16 it's all custom that's solid, really solid. I think it's that way because they had a big plow on here. This is probably like a highway plow that was on here. I'm gonna do a part two to this truck because it still needs more things on it to make it really an everyday truck. So I'll see you guys on those.